So it has started off as a beautiful morning. Sun has just now come up. I have done my three S's and I've drank a cup of coffee. My goal today is pretty ambitious and that is to test fit the 6 OLS that come out of the garbage salt truck that you see there. Test fit that in Johnny Cash Elizabeth's crew cab dually that is sitting a slightly off camera there. It's a pretty ambitious goal because I've got a ton to do before I can really you know, it's not just simple as put that on an engine stand and drop it in. I wish it was, but it's not. I got things that I got to do before that, and I'm just going to wing the video in today. I'm going to take you through everything that I'm going to do until I get to that point, because just I want you to see it quickly, that is. So thanks for watching. Let's get started and see if we can't, by the end of the day, be test fitting this engine in the crew cab. So my first goal of the day is to get this junk pulled back into that parking spot and get it kind of out of the driveway. Me and Elizabeth just rolled it out of the shop hoping it would have enough momentum to get back to where it's out of my way until it goes to the scrap yard, but we didn't. I still got to pull the transmission and transfer case out of this thing and then it's going to hit the scrap yard. So let's use Loretta Lynn. That's what Elizabeth named my truck. Loretta Lynn. Let's use Loretta and her winch and pull this thing back into a, back into its grave. Putting a winch on the front of this thing, that was just an awesome decision. I'm so glad I did that. This has come in handy so much. What I'm going to do is just kind of triangulate to the back of that. There's some trees behind the behind where you guys are standing, and I'm going to take a snatch block and hook winch line and just pull it right back into the into the spot there Ugh. poison ivy Well, that tree's just not going to do it. That didn't work very well, but uh, we did tr clean up around the place a bit. Need a hook to a bigger tree. I'm not going to pull that tree down. Yeah. Can feel the ticks on me now. Where's the other end of that chain? There it is. I think that'll do it. I changed my mind. Let's pull it back a little more. Hello, Daisy. Hello, Cora. What are you guys doing? Every time I use this winch on this truck, I just smile. Oh gosh, rip my pants even more. So now I need to get this transmission in the shop. Now this is a 4L80E. This is a two wheel drive version that come out of a, uh, this overdrive, which that truck didn't have originally, so it'll be nice, should help with the gas mileage. This transmission come out of a, a motor home, an RV, whatever. Uh, 
RVs are a lot like boats. People buy them with good intentions and they end up sitting around and rotting around the motor and transmission. And that was the case with this one. It's like less than 100,000 miles. So I was told it was good. I'm hoping that it is. So I got to get this thing in the shop, get it mated up to that engine. And uh, I'm going to try to stab them in together. I'm hoping that this uh, emergency brake bell, which you normally only see on heavier equipment, I'm hoping that this won't hit the floor in that truck and that I'll be able to use it because I don't want to have to buy anything else, to be honest. So let's see if we can't get this heavy thing in the shop. It's over 200 pounds, I'm sure. You can pull back. <coughs> Goodness, okay. So the next job is to quickly bleed at least the front brakes. So when we move this thing, you know, it'll be able to stop. So if you would, just uh, press that brake pedal. All right, pump it up. All right, hold on just for a second. No, move that off up. How fat that little guy is. Full of bugs, I'm sure. Hold it, push it, push it all the way down. All right, we're getting some fluid. All right, pump it up. Okay, hold it. All right, pump it up. All right, we'll hold it. Hold on for just a second. All right, that should be good enough. Is it pedal? Does it feel like it's got a pedal? I don't know, I can't tell with the truck. Does it, does it feel like it's it's not going to the floor? Okay, let's bleed the back real quick. So here's Chloe, the collie. She's a barky butt. She's normally she's normally inside. Don't show her too much. Here's Jealous Tail. Uh, we normally don't show her too much because she's normally inside. She's got she's got some issues with uh, her joints and stuff, which she's had for ever since she grew as a puppy. So she don't get around all that great. She kind of just she loves to play, but just very careful. I know, I know. Cora, she bothering you. Ow, quit biting. So something that I see all the time. I mean, you can go on marketplace or face space or craigslist or whatever and you'll see them from lists of them projects that people have started they get to a point about where i'm at and they they just give up for one they underestimate how much work that it's going to be because it is there is a gazillion parts on these if you got to go over an old vehicle and, and sort it out and it's in its most dangerous phase right now where it's worth less than the day the day that i pulled it out of the field right now even though I've done a ton of work to it, it doesn't make any difference. Not many people are interested in a project that somebody's tore down and blown apart in a million pieces, right? They don't even know if you got everything. So be mentally strong and get through this rough section of the restoration, rebuild, whatever, and just push forward. Even if you don't have the finances to buy the parts that you need to finish the project, usually there is still other things that you can work on. Polish up a piece of trim. I mean, do something. Because if you don't work on your project, it's definitely not going to move forward. And working on just even the littlest part can motivate you to continue forward and, you know, help in finishing the project. So I forgot. 
I've got to change the rear main oil seal on this thing. It's got 100,000 miles on it, and I'd hate to have, this engine does, and I'd hate to put it together, and then six weeks, the rear main starts leaking on it when it's super, the easiest to get to that it's going to be right now. So that's what I'm going to do. Quickly change the rear main oil seal. So instead of buying just the rear main seal itself and pressing it into that old cover, I bought the whole back cover. Not much more money, really, if you count the cost of the gasket. This thing came with brand new bolts. This is factory GM. So whole kit and caboodle, whole nine yards, entire ball of wax. That's the way I decided to do it. I just think you're better off that way. I'm not for sure what a kit and caboodle is, but I did get the whole kit caboodle instead of just the gasket. So in my opinion, I am doing a very budget LS swap. Now everybody's budget's different. I am reusing the original wiring harness. I'm changing the very minimal things, at least in my opinion, to get this engine uh, reliable. I do want to change this rear main oil seal simply because I don't want to have to get back in there once I get this engine in the truck you know, and have to change that. It, it is a very, very cheap part. But you start changing everything, like a lot of people, you know, fall into that trap. Might as well do it while we're in there and you're going to have a fortune, or you will have a fortune in it, because gaskets and stuff for these ain't cheap, and you wind up spending a bunch of money on parts that just are not bad. These engines easily go a couple hundred thousand miles if they get the oil changed in them twice. This thing's got just slightly over a hundred on it. Probably should have changed <clears throat> that little dog bone that's behind there, the little oil diverter, but I didn't. I did change the engine oil pickup tube o-ring, because it's like five bucks, and uh what else i mean you know you see people do it all the time and i just not going to fall into that that trap of let's pull it and check the uh rod and main bearings and let's look at the cam and change the intake gaskets because they're old and what about the you know what about the everything you know it's not a new engine and it never will be again so just trying to do my best to save as much money as possible and you know, get a reliable engine for Elizabeth. So I'm just about to try to jam these two together, carefully jam them together. Here's a little piece of advice. It's absolutely free, not gonna charge you a penny for it. And that is be very careful with a regular jack underneath these types of transmissions. The pans are not super thick on them. And what you can do and what I've seen done is a jack will bend the transmission pan. It'll smash up against the filter in there because they sit super close and it'll shut off the inlet, shut off the suction side of the filter, and you'll starve the transmission of fluid from just a little bend in the pan. It don't even have to be much, and then you'll burn up the transmission. So be careful. I know, just like me, a lot of you guys don't have dedicated transmission jacks, and you use regular jack out in the driveway. I know. Just be careful. Put a block of wood or something on there. Spread that load out. That way you don't crush that pan. Shut off your inlet suction and burn your transmission up. So this is a little older version for uh, L80E. It's a front oiler. So the newer versions will have the one, one of these or be near the back. Also, being an older version, it doesn't have the single bolt up here in the top. So there, you don't get that on, on the older bell housing. Not that it really matters, it doesn't make much difference. But it, there are differences. But they still bolt up just the same, basically. Check our turk turk converter, turk converter. Yeah. I don't know what the clearance should be. I'll have to check. So the space I was referring to, the spacing, is the distance between the torque converter, the gap between the torque converter and the flex plate, and it says a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch is what uh, is what I looked up. 
I was right on the maximum, so I made a couple shims to go in between each torque converter bolt. That way I don't pull the torque converter out of the transmission pump any more than what is necessary. So we're still above the minimum, but below the maximum spacing. So now I need to get this truck, at least the nose of it anyway, in the garage. So that's gonna be tough. I'm gonna pull it back. I'm just gonna use my, I'm gonna set in there steer. Whee! <laughs> Hope the brakes work. Use the winch with a remote, pull myself back. Then I've got a winch in the garage and I'll pull the crew cab in there. So this driver's side back wheel, I need to pull it over. I don't want to remove that stake. That's what's holding up my weeping willow tree. And if I just pull that up and back on up, well then I have to mess with the tree, pull it back and attach it. Don't want to do all that. So I'm just going to drag the back of the truck over. See that willow tree? I planted that, I don't know, 10 years ago, eight years ago, I'm guessing. And it weeped, because <laughs> it's a weeping willow, it weeped over a lot. And you can see it only growed grew, growed. It only grew like leaves and stuff on one side and I pulled it up to try to get it to grow a little more even. Will it work? I have no idea. But I'd rather it be standing a little more straight than just sagged all the way over. So, whatever. That's what, that's what I'm trying to do. A little girl. this thing in here. It's the first time I've had it in the shop. So what I need to do, I'm certain that I'll have to pull that transmission cross member because I know that emergency brake bell's not, <clears throat> not probably going to go over top of it. And it's got an old mount that's broke off on it anyway. So I'm going to pull that transmission cross member and then there's really nothing stopping me from setting that motor in here. I'm trying to set it in here. Elizabeth is back here cleaning that cross member. Doing an excellent job. <laughs> a lot I'd easier. Like a white. Yeah, I can get you a lot. A lot nicer to clean this stuff up instead of putting it back in dirty. That way if you have an oil leak or something, it's just so much easier to find if everything's not covered in goo. 
So see these motor mounts? How they're adjustable. I got these hoping that that would give me enough adjustment to take make up for the difference in extra length on this transmission. It's a little longer than, uh, I think three, about three inches longer than the uh, Turbo 400 uh, that this come with originally. This was a big block Turbo 400 truck. This is heavy, but it's definitely not big block heavy. Let's see how that's adjustable, and I'm hoping that that'll give me just enough to where I don't have to cut the drive shaft, but I may. And if I do, it's not that big a deal, but I'm hoping that I don't have to. Probably will. That's okay to get past there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's on both sides hitting that edge of that bell housing. Those are easy enough to pull off. Let me just pull those off. That'll give me the clearance that I need to, to squeeze by. And I gotta put a jack under the end of that transmission and kind of, you know, get it in that way. So I decided to take a risk and just pull that strap off the transmission and put a jack under it. It's kind of pushing on the intake there. That's why people pull those off and put those lift plates on them because they don't want to break all that plastic stuff. But I think if it doesn't slide off that jack, I may be able to just squeeze that by them mounts without pulling them off. Think. Can I just get my leg in here and send you okay? Yeah, you can. Um, I'm going to just pull back on the jack, and I want you to just try to try to shimmy this back if you would. All right, see if you can't uh, just... Push it back? Yeah, just carefully. Okay, hold on. Okay, go ahead and push back a little bit. Okay, hold on. Okay, a little more. Okay, hold on. Okay, let me crawl out and see what's going on. Okay. Ooh. Oh yeah, we can go down now. Okay. That's good. Yeah, just just uh, hold on to it there. Push it back. Okay, here, let me let me get this and I don't want to go back too far. That's about where it needs to be. Uh -uh. Yeah, we're getting close. We're getting close, love. Almost, Johnny's almost got his heart. Okay, let me get a bolt in this side. The engine mount is pretty much lined up over here. We, but it will. idea probably not it's possible so there's that one all the way through whoa well, that went right in all right 
motor mounts are in. Yeah, we'll see. Well, I made a mistake. I put these engine mounts on the wrong side. So now I'm gonna have to take this, this one off, put it on that side, and that one off, and put it on this side. Not that big a deal, but I need it to where it will adjust back, not forward. Because we got like plenty of space back there, too much. And I need to flip those. So Elizabeth done a great job cleaning up these mounts. It's amazing how good something can look that's being this being as old as this thing is. I always used to love getting old motorcycles that were covered in grease, especially when the engine was covered in grease. Chances are underneath that grease, everything was still okay. So looks really good. I'm gonna stick this under there and hopefully, hopefully this will be in at least close to the position that it should be in or that it was originally in. Hopefully, hopefully, we'll see. I doubt it will be. Are you helping? I think so. So I know this is a very well lit professional shot that you're getting here. Kind of hard to film underneath of a vehicle. Mm. Mm. And it takes on that transmission. Guess what? Mm. Jack's in the way. So I'm having to pull this emergency brake drum off because I can't slide the cross member in. The cross member goes up and above frame rails like that. And there's just no way to get this cross member in with this in place. So this engine is set in. Hopefully I can get those headers in. I would think that I could. But I'll find out. Not, not hard, really. It kinda just went right in. Did have to mess with that transmission cross member some, but that's no surprise. Yeah. No surprise at all. Now I don't know if the drive shaft's gonna fit. Probably will not. The original drive shaft, but I don't know that it won't. So I'm hopeful. Yeah, it's, if anything, the drive shaft's going to be uh, it's going to be too long.
Some ain't very thick, are they? No, they're not. That's surprising. Thick. Really? That makes a good cut. Cut? Look how nice that cut is. Well, it is thick, Just as good as any bag of day. See how that's... Yeah, I've never had seen these. I don't know. I don't go what about an inch up in there. I don't know what... Uh, Eighth inch? Yeah, close. Okay. So my brother stopped by. He helped me test fit this drive shaft, and obviously it was too long. I wouldn't have cut this chunk out of it. About three and a half inches too long. About what I figured. Um, there wasn't enough adjustment in those engine mounts to make up for this this extra length in the shaft. And if I I could have pushed the engine forward farther, but. There was some interference issues between the oil pan and the steering linkage on that C30. So just decided to put the motor in the original position, use the original holes that the cross transmission cross member and stuff come out of, and uh, you know just decided, hey, shortening drive shaft's not all that hard. Pretty self-explanatory what I'm doing here, just cutting off the piece that the extra metal off the shaft so I can slide this end piece that'll be left back into the shortened shaft and then weld it up. So because I don't want to take my parting blade and just cut through the original weld on this and risk cutting into the, the part that I'm going to be pressing back on, I just decided, I've done this in the past, to thin out the shaft basically and then peel it off like a piece of foil once I turn it down real thin. But I did have some problems with the whatever metal this drive shaft's made of. I'm not sure. Cut like mild steel. Very gummy. And I could not get it to pull a chip with the carbide insert at all. I'm trying here, it's just kind of tearing the metal off. I switch through a couple inserts, then I just end up, you know, end up using a piece of high-speed steel that was really sharp, and that, you know, gave me the, gave me the best chip and best cut, I'll say. Sometimes you just gotta go back to the old-school high-speed steel. There's things that it works really well for. And a really sharp edge is something you can get on, well, you can get it on carbide too, but it's a lot easier to get on high-speed steel. So because I know somebody in the comments is going to go, why didn't you just use the press that you're standing by to press that in? Let me tell you why. Because it's too long and it doesn't fit in the press. So I had to drive it in. So boom, this drive shaft is just about ready to be welded back up. And in my lifetime, I've done 
more than a handful of these. And mostly keep in mind on old four wheel drive pickup trucks and hot rods where, you know, you may hit a top speed of 80 on average, maybe 100 on a Saturday night, who knows? But they're not land speed record, not six second quarter mile stuff. Obviously you'd probably have, want to have one professionally done otherwise. But in the past, out of necessity, because it's kind of expensive to have one of these cut and remade, <laughs> You know, I've, I've done them, the most of them out in the driveway, gravel, slice and dice wheel on an angle grinder, put a piece of tape around them, cut them, cut the weld, air hammer off the section, drive them back together, roll them on top of a 55 gallon drum to see if you got any run out, and uh, you know, adjust it with a hammer if you do, weld them back together and you know, you're off to the races. Uh, I've done them for myself and I've done them for other folks who were in the same situation financially as me. And I've always had good luck. Never had one that was noticeably, uh, you know, noticeably out. I'm sure they weren't perfect, but you get the idea. It's something you could do. So we cut it or removed three and a half inches because that transmission is longer than the transmission that came in that truck originally. Uh, heated it, drove it back together with a big piece of copper and a sledgehammer because definitely an interference fit here, and uh, took it out, test fit it. it. Looks like it's within the range that it should be in. And now I've got it on a set to do all rollers big rollers here, and I'm just eyeballing the run out, making sure it's within a acceptable range, and then, uh, you know, if it is, I'm gonna weld it up and install it, and this drive shaft will be complete and behind me, which is nice, both literally and figuratively behind me. So this is not a perfect setup here. The shaft is kind of rough on the outside, so we get a lot of noise on the indicator, and I'm not looking at the noise, I'm looking at the average. The the max and the min movement on, on this uh, indicator here. So I'm gonna check it out here, and then I'm gonna check it where the, uh, where the carrier bearing runs. Now this has a center on the end here, and you probably it doesn't have one on the other end, but you would probably have a, a flange or something on the end that would have a center in it. But this is the best that I got. I don't have any other way to really check it. So I'm gonna show you. You see the needle jittering, and that's just the rough surface here that is reading. We're looking at the you know, the soft deflection. So it's looking like we're within about 10 thousandths. Maybe a little less, which is pretty dang good if you ask me. Let's check it in over here where the carrier bearing runs. Because you there's going to be one section on this that runs perfectly true, and you, that's why you check in multiple spots. Zero. So, I mean, to me, that's looking like that's in there pretty good. So I'll just mark it. I'll go out here, find the spot where it's the highest. I'll mark that and then I'll tack weld it. My first tack weld will be on the other side so I can counteract any bit, hopefully counteract any uh, run out that this has and then I'll come over the other side and tack it. And then once I've welded it, I'll check it again and you could heat straighten this shaft as well. You guys have seen me do that in the past, but I'm not gonna do it unless it's necessary. So that is my, what looks to be anyway, my highest spot. So I'll just come 180 degrees from that and I'll tack weld over here first. Bzzz, that'll pull it just a little bit and then I'll come over to the other side, tack weld that and it'll pull it back but not quite as much probably as it was originally. And then I'll just tack around it and then buzz it. That's what I plan to do anyway. This metal is just far too crusty to tack weld.
have to be good enough. I'll just grind that well down a little bit. And she'll be good. So there we go, all welded up. And you go, this will either work or it won't. We haven't lost anything here. The, I checked it after it's welded. I just need to spray a little paint on that. And if it moved at all, it moved a couple thou. Not even noticeable through the noise of this. So as best as I can check this with the setup that I got, I think that we're good. And I know there's a lot of, a lot of guys out there who clutch their pearls when you start messing with drive shafts and stuff. But it'll either work or it won't. And if it doesn't, it, you know, this is towards the back of the vehicle, so it'll just flop down, maybe take out the back floorboard if I was, you know, jamming it. But you get the idea. It's, it's going to be fine. I'm super happy with the way that it turned out. Now I can install this in the truck. So here's something some of you guys may find interesting. This is considered a conversion joint. Technically, that's its name. In automotive shops around the world, they call it a bastard joint. That's what I've always heard it referred to. And that's because it's different length in one direction than it is in the other. Because this transmission come out of a motorhome that took much larger drive shafts uh, than this truck, you know, I had to get a joint. Instead of buying all new shafts, had to get a joint to can do the conversion. So it's like a 1350 to a 1410, or 1310 to 1450. Not exactly for sure, but uh, you get the idea. It's longer in one direction than it is in the other to adapt one size shaft uh, to another. Conversion joint. So I'm just about to weld these uh, connectors, couplers, whatever you want to call it. They're stainless steel onto my stainless steel headers. And what I don't want to happen is the other side of the pipe that I'm welding on, if I'm welding on this side, the inside will be exposed to oxygen and it'll oxidize. Sugar is what I call it. Well, unless you the way to combat that is to back gas whatever you're welding. Set up another gas system to purge the inside of the vessel or tube or whatever you're welding so it's an oxygen-free environment and you don't get that oxidation in there. Well, there's another way, and this was, this was introduced to me by a viewer some time ago, and I've just you've been using the daylights out of this stuff ever since. Super handy. Seven lifetime supply here for the home shop guy, by the way. Type B solar flux. Now I'm gonna, this is a powder, I'll, I'll show you. I'm gonna mix a little bit of that and put a little bit of that into this bottom of this water bottle, mix a little bit of methanol with it and make a paste. And then I can use this brush and I can brush it on the opposite side of the tube or whatever that I'm welding. Then this acts as a flux because it is a flux and shields the other side of the weld and keeps it from sugaring or oxidizing. Hopefully that all made sense. I'll show you, you'll see. So these are kind of thick and they slide up on here so it's really not the best example but it'll make sense anyway what i'm going to do if i can get this hopefully it'll go up on there i'll have to probably knock it up on there i'm going to clean this really good i'm going to knock it up on there and i'm going to weld this from the inside that way i don't have an exposed weld bead on the outside because it's just not necessary to weld this both inside and out and what i'm going to do is use some of this stuff and I'm gonna brush it on out here. That way when I weld the inside, it doesn't burn on the outside and look like garbage. So that's what I'm gonna do, or vice versa. You get the idea. You can weld on the outside and put this stuff on the inside. It's just to protect the opposite side of the metal when you're welding to keep, and also keeps you from having to set up a whole back gas system. So it says mix a pound of flux with six to seven ounces of alcohol, methanol preferred. I'm using methanol, but I have used alcohol and it works just as well, seems to. Stir thoroughly, form a, thick, form a thin paste about the consistency of thick cream. Per permit mix to stand for several minutes to allow chemical reaction between the flux and alcohol. Um, apply a good even coat on the back side of the seam before welding, so where possible. Uh, apply a light coat between edges of the joint before tacking. Weld in your normal manner. See the Solar Flux brochure for complete information. Yeah. A little splash of this stuff. Probably way too much. was, but that's okay. So 
like trying to look through my arm. But anyway, that's kind of what it looks like when you add too much methanol. But anyway, I'll let this evaporate just for a minute and then we'll brush it on and it'll be fine. It doesn't take very much of this stuff. Just a light coat like this will will do a really good job of protecting uh, the metal from oxidizing when you're welding it. This stuff dries super quick. And that's it. Now I can weld it and it won't oxidize out here. And then after you're done welding, just this stuff brushes off pretty easy. So I just got done butchering this set of headers. The passenger side fit great. Well, I say great. I had to trim off a little bit of the ear of the transmission. Also had to uh, relieve the frame, about an eighth of an inch in a couple, couple small spots. But typical header woes. Driver's side, not even close to fitting. In my defense, I bought the wrong ones. These said that they'd fit a C10 in the description. And I just assumed that the C10 and the C30 are close enough, well, they'll work. Well, guess what? These don't fit a C30 with a uh, LS in it. <laughs> Not even close on the, on the driver's side. What I decided to do was beat the daylights out of this tube because I thought that's where it was hitting. Um, and come to find out, it was also hitting down here at the collector. So I got this big booger here on this header. And uh, it was, I would have had to re remove at least an inch and a half of web on the bottom of the frame rail so this collector wouldn't hit it and I just wasn't I wasn't gonna do that figured there has to be a better way so what I decided to do is take my slice and dice wheel big thick hundred thousandths of an inch uh, cut off wheel which I, I love cut off wheels by the way and I cut all of these tubes at the bottom right above the flange here cut them all about three quarters of the way through and I've got this the flange mounted to the workbench here and what that'll allow me to do is close up that gap bend these headers in because it takes a lot less movement up here than it does down here uh, you know i can cut an eighth of an inch up here it'll move it an inch or better here so i decided to do that and then when i push it together i can close up that gap they won't be as beautiful as they were before but once i wrap them you won't see that anyway and no one will know that these are butchered but that's just the way it goes sometimes, especially with headers, and then you're doing a custom swap. I'm sure that they probably make a set of headers that will just bolt right on that, but I didn't buy them. Plus, I waited, like I said, too long to return them. So this is what it's getting, which will be fine. But, you know. So I had to move this dude outside. So see that header? This is the passenger side. The side that fit pretty good. I did have to just barely trim the frame rail there and down there at the collector not not bad you know typical header stuff now this side different story although I got it bolted up right now it's not I haven't welded up my 
cuts that I made. You can see I just left it right at the top there. Cut all the way through, everywhere, down at the bottom, all the way at the top. So, Because it was, originally, it was hitting here. And that's where I boogered up the... Uh, yeah, I regret doing that, but I did it. The uh, tube there, but the main part was down at the bottom. Let me take you under there and show you. One of those wires. Still got a few miles left on her. Show you what's going on under here. Oh, goodness. Mm. Okay, see how that's hitting the frame rail there? And there, and that's this pushed in. Yeah, I would have had to have trimmed all the way through here. Probably a good inch or so in. And I don't want to do that to this chassis. So, now that I've cut that, watch this. Uh, I'll just bend it into it touches and weld it up. And that'll be plenty of clearance. So I think that's going to work. So it's going to work good. Well, I got those headers whooped finally. What a pain in the tail. That was a battle royale to get those headers in. But I did. You know, I wish I would have cut them. I wish I'd have thought about cutting them before I started, you know, boogering them up. Not that that's going to hurt anything, but you get the idea. Would be nice, because they would have fit just fine had I cut it and re-welded it to begin with. Not the most beautiful welds, but not bad. Didn't look didn't look great. I wasn't trying to make it beautiful. just trying to get done, to be honest. Drilled my bolts, you can see. So once I'm done, I'll do this just like my other truck and tie wire these. That way, you know, they can't... They're, I'm not relying on lock washer or lock tie it or anything like that. Those tie wires, at least on my truck, have worked great. I've had no header leaks at all. The bolts haven't worked out because they can't. They're wired together. Anyway, you see... Motor, transmission, headers, installed. Really, you know, most people can put in a motor. That's not uh, that's not that big a deal And transmission. The wiring is the part that trips up most people on, on these LS swaps. But there you go. She has a heart. Or he, Johnny, Johnny Cash, identifies as a, as a he. So, heart and legs. That's transmission, I guess. There you go. Really happy with it so far. So here's a quick shot of me working on the wiring harness. Now what I'm doing is reworking the factory harness that came with the, the truck that I bought, with that motor. And uh, this is the most feared part, at least for most people, including myself. I had never done one of these before. Now obviously you can buy these pre-made, but you're going to spend probably $150 to $200 probably from the cheapest for the cheapest overseas harness that money can pur purchase or maybe 800 to even thousand possibly for some of the name brand um, you know, American made harnesses and I just decided that hey I'm gonna bite the bullet even though I'm not a uh, electrical guy I'm gonna follow the online tutorials I went to ls1swaps.com printed off some information then went to the ls1swaps uh, dot com uh, YouTube channel and just followed his video tutorial on how to do it and I'm telling you it was about as straightforward as it gets you don't even have to be a you don't have to be electronics guy to do it so you know if you were to do an LS swap if you ever dis decided to tackle it don't be afraid of the wire and harness it's really it's not that hard if I could do it I believe about anybody could so there you go, guys. That is it for me this week. I am out of time. I've been on vacation for the last, uh, the past week, you know, trying to take it easy and, uh, you know, just relax. So maybe next week we'll get back to schedule. Hopefully next week back on, uh, on some machining content. But I figured I'd give you, you know, a big update on Johnny Cash, Elizabeth's Crew Cab Dooley. And, uh, there should be one, maybe two more. And then this project to be complete i'm excited to get this thing wrapped up so thanks for watching guys viewers patrons subscribers anyone who's helped me out whatsoever it is much appreciated and that's it thanks for watching and i'll see you next time